Good Erev Shabbos. Today is Friday, Erev Shabbos, Parshas Pinchas. And contained in this week's Sedra is an extraordinary story. It is uh, the, the example, uh, greatest example of attorney malpractice in the Torah, at least on the face of it. Torah tells us of the story of Benos Tzlafchad, who seemed to be arguing the case of their father, who by no fault of his own only had sons, uh, only had daughters, he had no sons, and as a consequence, what the apparent law at the time was, that the land uh, of Israel that belonged to each family would go down generation to generation through the boys and not through the daughters. And as a consequence, the Benos Tzlafchad argued, why should our father's name lose out? Why should his uh, property be lost? He only had daughters, no sons. We demand and we argue on his behalf that we should be the inheritors of his property. And what was their argument? Says the Pasuk, Avinu meis Midbar, father died in the desert. He was not part of the terrible, rebellious group of Korach and his cohorts. That's all good. That's a good defense. I would love to have an attorney uh, like that. But then they say the following, Ki vechet o meis, he died of his own sins. That's their defense. That's their justification. That's the merit that they're trying to present to Moshe Rabbeinu to argue that their father's property should uh, be inherited through them by highlighting his sins. That seems to be attorney malpractice. And yet, although they argued by, uh, against their father's own merits, ki bechet omes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu accedes to their wishes. So what was the genius of Benos Tzlavchad, which on the face of it seems to be attorney malpractice? There are a few approaches that are offered by Chazal and the Mefarshim. The first is to say, Ki Bechet HaOmeis, Rabbi Huda ben Becerra argues that there was no specific Avera, no specific sin. When we say that somebody died of their sins, it basically is saying that a person led a normal life, an ordinary life, and everybody has good and bad, we do the best we can, we die of our sins as it were, he died of his sins, he wasn't perfect, he was not going to live forever. And this was the genius of Benos Slavchad. They said that's good enough. That's good enough for Tzlavchad to be awarded this uh, the, the, uh, changing of the law, that the inheritance should go to the daughters. Because leading an ordinary life is actually extraordinary. Tzlavchad went, uh, went to work every morning, nine to five, as it were, to try to support his family. He did the right things. He paid his taxes. He, did, he was a good family man. He did the best he could. He had failures. He had weaknesses. He had flaws. He had faults. He died of his sins. He was a normal person. And that is good enough because leading an, an ordinary life can actually be extraordinary. And that's a message for us as well. Our goal should not necessarily be in life to be the perfect tzaddik, to be Moshe Rabbeinu, to be a Sarah Imenu. It, we don't have to reach that level to be extraordinary. Leading an ordinary life, doing the best we can, is sufficient. And if we look around carefully, just in these last several months, how many ordinary folks do we know that we find are extraordinary? The members of Hatzala doing their extraordinary work day in and day out. Health professionals, mental health professionals, even the sanitation workers in the, uh, who collect our garbage several times a week, doing menial labor so we can lead dignified lives. Essential work. It is ordinary existence which is extraordinary. And if we look carefully around us, we will find the extraordinariness of ordinary people. That was the genius of Benos Slavchad. Ki bechet meis. They weren't condemning their father. This wasn't attorney malpractice. They were saying, look at him. He was an ordinary person and he did the best he could in life. Bechet meis. He was no Korach. He didn't try to worship Avodah Zarah, overturn the system, rebel against God. And that's good enough. There's a second approach. Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon dispute what the particular sin was. This is a classic Jewish, we're going to argue about what his sin was. Rabbi Akiva says he was the Mekoshe Sheitzim, the anonymous man who violated Shabbos uh, in the Midbar. 
Rabbi Shimon says he was one of the ma'apilim, one of the individuals who after God had rescinded his command to, uh, to conquer Eretz Yisrael after the sin of the Miraglim, there were a group of people, Tzlafchad amongst them, who said, let's go and conquer the land anyway. We're ready to go now. And of course, that led to disaster. But he was ready to, uh, to, to, to go uh, to conquer the land of Israel. Benos Slavchad said, look at our father. He was wrong. He was misguided. He was incorrect. He was mistaken. He shouldn't have done what he did. Mikoshe Sheitzim, according to Rabbi Akiva. Ma'apilim, according to Rabbi Shimon. He was 100% wrong. But look at what his motivating factor was. He was willing to sacrifice himself for Klal Yisrael. He was willing to sacrifice himself for the betterment of the nation as a whole. The Medrash famous, famously teaches that in the Midbar, in the desert, the Jewish people apparently uh, were, seemed to be in a state of despair. They thought the whole system of uh, Torah, Judaism, God, the, the whole thing was, uh, uh, was, uh, was not going to work out. And so the Mikoshe Sheitzim, uh, in this, uh, identified as Slavchat, said, no, there is a God, he is present, and his presence is, is felt. And I'm going to prove it. And he violates the Shabbos, knowing full well that on God's command he will be sentenced to death. There is a system, there is relevance, there is a reality. And he was willing to go on a suicide mission to prove that reality to be so, to show the people that God's presence is felt, that there is a system of Torah Judaism, that it is real and relevant and applicable. And he was willing to die for it. The common denominator between the Ma'apilim and the Mekoshesh Eitzim is that he was willing to do something extraordinary for the Jewish people, sacrificing himself, maybe even giving the ultimate sacrifice, but to do so in a way that he was the sacrifice, not somebody else. I am reminded, Lahavdil Elef Alfe Havdalos, Shimon Perez once said years ago, uh, regarding the suicide bombers, he said a very sharp uh, comment. He said, I wish that the people who were sending the suicide bombers in Israel would go themselves. In other words, that uh, it's one thing to believe in a cause. It's another thing to believe in a cause on the back of somebody else's, on somebody else's back, on somebody else's cheshbon. This was the genius of Benos Slavchad. They said, look at our father's sin. Our father was willing to do something for the cause, but he wasn't willing to do it on somebody else's back. He was willing to sacrifice himself. Mekoshesh Eitzim, according to Rabbi Akiva. The Ma'apilim, according to Rabbi Shimon. Either way, he was willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good and not sacrifice somebody else for the greater, for the greater good. It seems to me that this was the genius, not the, not the uh, legal malpractice of Benos Tzlafchad. Look at the sins of our father. And in those sins, you will still see an extraordinary man of righteousness. It seems to me that at this time, more than ever, it's imperative for us to look around and at our family, at our neighbors, at our community, at our nation as a whole, and look at each other and see our faults and see our failings and see our weaknesses. And yet, try to see the goodness within each and every person. And if we do so, then perhaps we will begin to heal the bonds within our families and the community at large. We are now entering the period of the three weeks, which commemorates the sin of Sinas Chinam. And our challenge is to repair the, uh, the fractures within our body politic. Kei may be the will of God, v'nomar, amen. Good Shabbos.